In this video, I'm gonna show you how to connect your Express server to an S3 bucket so that it can store all the images in the bucket and then get them back later when the users need to see them. And the way we'll accomplish this is by uploading the image to the Express server first and then pushing it to the S3 bucket. Then when the user needs to request a file, it will first go to the Express server and then you'll get it from the S3 bucket and send it back down to the client. This gives the Node app complete control over everything so that if we only wanna show images to users that are authorized, we can control all of that with JavaScript. I have a separate video explaining how to set up S3 buckets just to serve static content and an article explaining how to just upload images to an Express app without using an S3 bucket. And I'll put links to those things in the description. And what will you do? And why to I lay with it? I have a really basic React app here that just displays a form to a user so they can select an image, give it a description and submit it to the server. And if we take a look at this, this is the basic form. And if we click submit, it tries to make a post request to the server at slash images to post the photo data. And right now the server is doing pretty much nothing. It's just sitting here allowing post requests at slash images and doing nothing but sending a response. So the first thing we wanna do is actually have this endpoint right here, allow images to be uploaded and store it in the file system on the server. And to do this, we have a really nice library that we can use called Malta. And this library lets us receive images on the express server and store them in the file system by writing like three lines of code, I think. So the first thing I have to do is actually install Malta. And then, pretty sure I can just copy and paste some of this example code. Gotta love example code. So this will require the Malta library and then I'm gonna specify a destination for all the files that are uploaded to my server. I'm just gonna store that in an uploads folder. And then the final piece of the puzzle here is to create a middleware function that will accept uh, a file. And in this case, I'm gonna call mine image because on the client, I am uploading the file and I'm calling it image in the form data. And now when this post request is made, uh, Malta will check for an image binary data in the data being sent to the server and store it in the uploads folder. So if I actually go back to the application on the front end and try uploading an image, let's take one of these and submit it. If I look at my post request, it posted to slash images. It sent the image as binary data, little description, not really gonna use that for anything. Just wanted to show that we can send any data, including an image. And if we take a look at the server file system, I'll see that there is an uploads directory that's been created and the image has actually been uploaded to the server and is just being stored there. So getting the image to the server is a really easy step. And Malta also gives us a few pieces of data here. The data about the file is stored in rec.file and any other information that was sent up to the server is gonna be stored in rec.body. So in this case, I sent a, a description. So I could just pull that out of rec.body if I wanted to. I'm not actually gonna do anything with it, but just nice to know I have that. Um, and I'm just gonna console log the file object so we can see what kind of information we get from that. So if I submit that photo again, it should upload another photo into the uploads directory. And if I check the console here, we should see this is all the information we get about the image. So there's the path that it exists on the server, upload slash that random name that Malta gives it, uh, the actual name of the file, a few other bits of information that I don't really care about right now. But this path and file name are gonna be useful because the path is where the file actually exists and we're gonna need to send it from there to the S3 bucket. And the file name is handy because we can just keep using that same file name in the S3 bucket. And then if we had a database set up, we could store that file name in the database so that we could easily get back the image later on. So at this point, files are being uploaded to the server and being stored in the server's file system. And now we just need to get them to the S3 bucket. Before we can actually send an image to an S3 bucket, we need to have an S3 bucket set up and we do that through our AWS account. So if you haven't already, you'll need to sign up for an AWS account. I already have mine set up, so I'll just log in. And then once you're signed in, you can navigate to the S3 bucket console 
And here it's really easy to just create a new bucket. You go to create bucket and give it a name. This has to be a unique name. So let's go with uh, Insta amazing app. Instagram. There we go. That seems unique. Um, and then I'm going to store it in North Virginia. You can choose any region you want, but if you're not sure which region, just go with North Virginia. Uh, and that's it. We can leave everything else as the default settings. Everything will be kept private and secure, and we'll just create that new bucket. And now if we go and find the bucket, we can click on the bucket uh, and we can see that it currently has no objects in it and we can modify some of the settings from here if we wanted to. We don't, we want to leave it alone, but there are two pieces of information we want to store that we'll need in our application. The first is the bucket name. So I'm just going to copy this from here and go back to my server file. And I'm going to store all of these things in a .env file because we won't really want to commit a lot of this data uh, with the application. We want it separate. So I'm going to call this bucket, maybe AWS bucket name. Uh, AWS bucket region. This is US East one for North Virginia. Um, so that's it for now. We'll add more data to this in a second. So we have the bucket. We want to be able to post images to the bucket, but right now this bucket is completely private. I can access the bucket right now because I'm logged in as a user in my AWS account and my account allows me to access all of the services within AWS that are owned by my account but no web app or no other user can access this S3 bucket. So we need a way of providing permission to our express server to actually access this bucket to upload and get images from the bucket. And to do this in AWS, we can navigate to the IAM console. That's the identity and access management console. And this is what AWS uses to uh, allow and restrict access to any service within AWS. So, the first thing we need to do is go to policies and create a new policy. And a policy is a set of rules that we can create that can allow or disallow certain behaviors on different services within AWS. So we're going to create a policy that allows something to add a file, read a file, and maybe delete a file from this specific S3 bucket. And that's all it's allowed to do. So in services here, we're going to choose S3 because the actions are going to be applied to the S3 bucket. Then in this list of actions, there's lots of things you can do to an S3 bucket. Uh, underneath right, we really only care about deleting an object. That's deleting uh, an image from a bucket later on if we need to. Putting an object, that's uploading a file to the S3 bucket. And then in the read list, we want to be able to, where is it? There we go, get an object. And we could be selecting more actions here, but that's really all the web app needs to do in this case add a file, get a file, maybe delete a file. So that's all I care about there. And then in this resources section right here, this is where we get to actually specify the individual bucket that we just created. So if I click here to add an ARN, it wants me to add the name of the bucket that we want to apply this to. And that's the bucket that we just created. If we don't apply this, this role will apply to any S3 bucket. And that could be bad because you don't want this app having access to any other bucket other than this one that we created specifically for this app. So we're only going to allow it to do these things within the bucket. But when it comes to objects within the bucket, this is files, it can upload any file, it can delete any file, and it can read any file within the bucket as long as it's in that single bucket. So we'll add that to the resources. Uh, and that's it. We can move on to next adding tags, which I'm not going to add any next review. And then we'll give this a name Insta app uh, bucket policy. Not the best at naming. That's fine. Create the policy. So we finished making the policy that specifies exactly what our application can do. But now we need to assign this policy to a user and the user will represent our application. So a user can be a user like myself, like I can log into AWS and I can access the bucket, or we can apply a user to an application like the Express app. And it's kind of like the Express app is logging into the AWS account, only has access to the S3 bucket in the way we applied in that policy, and then it can just access the bucket as it needs to. So we're going to create a user for the Express app. So I guess I'll call this Insta Amazing App. That's actually probably good enough. Uh, and then down here, because it's an app, it's not a real human user that's going to log in, we're going to give it programmatic access. 
Next, we can go to permissions and here's where we attach the existing policy that we just created. So if we go to this little tab here and then search for the policy we just made, I've forgotten what I called it, Insta something. Oh, there it is, Insta app bucket policy, select that. And we can add as many policies as we want. So I could create rules that allow this app to uh, connect to uh, a database managed by AWS or some other services. Right now I only care about S3. Uh, we'll go to add tags. Again, not gonna add any tags. Uh, review, yep, that's good. And then we create the user. So super easy, just create the user and add that policy. And then we get to this page and this matters a lot. We need to keep track of this access key right here. So I'm gonna copy the access key and go back to my env and I'm gonna write AWS access key. And then the second most important piece of this is the secret access key, which I'm gonna show right now and make sure you immediately copy that, paste it into the M file, seek secret key, and never share this with anyone. Don't let anyone see your keys ever. This is the ability to log in and modify all of the things within that S3 bucket. So you need to keep this secret. You need to make sure no one ever sees it. Um, and this is the way that the application is actually gonna be able to access the bucket. So now that we've got those saved, I can close this page and I am gonna leave this alone for a while because that's all we really need. So now that we have that data, all we need to do is write the JavaScript code that actually pushes that image to the S3 bucket. And to do that, we're gonna use the AWS SDK for node. So if we scroll down to the NPM page for the AWS SDK, we'll get instructions on how to install it, but there aren't many docs here. It's really just uh, kind of like a, a readme page, but Amazon does provide a lot of documentation. Uh, it's just not known for being the best documentation and the easiest to read and even existing in this case. Uh, so I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna install it and then show you how to do this. So first thing I need to do is go to my server, npm install AWS SDK, and I'm only gonna be using the S3 part of this SDK. So I'm gonna go into VS Code, and in my server, I'm gonna make a new file. I think I'm just gonna call this s3.js. And in here, I'm gonna require, require just the S3 part of the actual AWS SDK client. Uh, and then from here, I'm gonna need to do two things. I'm gonna need a function that uploads a file to S3 and another function that basically downloads a file from S3. So when a user uploads a photo, it's gonna go up to the S3 bucket. And then when a user tries to get a photo, probably by putting a URL in an image tag, uh, the server will have to grab it from S3 and then pipe it back down to the client. But before we can do either of those things, we need to create a new instance of the S3 class here. And this is where we need to provide all of the details that we have in the environment variables file. So I'm actually just gonna copy this and create some variables here. So I'm getting the information from the .m file and then once this is on a server, I'll actually have to have the environment variables on that server. And then we initialize a new instance of this S3 object using the region, the access key, and the secret access key. And as long as all of those are correct, we'll be able to access that bucket. Uh, there's just one more thing I need to be able to do because I'm using a .env file. I need to install .env, the library, and then I need to uh, require .env and config it. And now, good. Um, now this all should work. So the next thing I need to do is create that function that actually uploads the file to S3. So here's the function. I've called it upload file. Uh, we're gonna pass in that file object that came from Malta that has the file path on the server and that file name that's just that unique key. So I'm first gonna create a read stream using the FS library, so I imported that. And through that read stream, we can actually create this object that contains the read stream as the body, the bucket name as the bucket, 
And the key, this is gonna be the name of the file within the S3 bucket. I'm just gonna use the file name that Malta created. Then if we pass this to the s3.upload function, it will upload it to the S3 bucket. And then we can call dot promise on that function to return a promise rather than having to use callback functions. So a pretty small function to actually get this to upload to S3. And now that I have this implemented, if I go back to my server, I can just uh, grab that upload file function from S3, perfect. And then in here, I'm gonna make this an async function. And right here, we can await upload file and pass in that file from Malta. So Malta will store it in the uploads directory. Uh, we send that to S3, we wait for that to actually be successful. We should probably do some error handling here, but I'm just gonna leave it for now. Uh, and then we'll just send back, um, actually I'm not sure what we send back. Let's first actually grab the result. Yeah, the result from S3. And I'm gonna console log the result. So we should see this make its way to the S3 bucket and then we'll console log what S3 gives back to us so we can actually see what's going on. And the end result here should be that we send enough information back to the client so that the client can then make a request to get the image and then we'll be able to see the image appear even though it's hosted in the S3 bucket. Uh, so let's try this now. Let's go back to, oh, no, I've done something wrong. Can't export because I'm not using modules. I need, there we go, I already did the exports. Perfect, okay. So now back on the client, uh, I've already got my image selected. I'm just gonna clear the network log. And if we submit this, it's uploading the file, let's see. Oh, and it came back as a successful request. There we go, we got that little okay hand. Uh, so, it looks like this is the stuff from Malta. This is just the image upload initially to the server. And then this is the information we actually get back from S3. So this is a URL that could be accessed to actually get the image data. And if we wanted to, we could modify the S3 bucket to make these files publicly available. And that way we could just use this URL and every time someone wants to get an image, they don't have to go through our server first. They can just go and get it straight from S3. And this is fine, a lot of people like to do this. I prefer to go through the server though, because with most applications, I want users to be logged in before they can actually see an image. I just wanna make them publicly available. Uh, so instead we're gonna use this key right here, either one, uppercase or lowercase. Uh, and we're gonna use this to actually be able to get the images back. Uh, one more thing we should do is actually go back to the S3 bucket and make sure that the file actually exists in the bucket, make sure we can see it there. So I'm gonna to go to my Insta Amazing Appstagram and it's loading the objects and there it is. There's that key for the file that's been uploaded and if I check terminal, it matches the key that we actually got back from S3. So that's perfect. It seems to be uploading straight to the S3 bucket. And then on the way back down, so in the server response here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna provide an object that just says image, uh, image path maybe. Uh, and I'm gonna say that it exists at slash images slash uh, result dot key. So this is the key, this is the file name within S3. And by doing this, I'm basically telling the client, if you make a get request to slash images slash the, the file key, uh, I will go to S3 and grab the image for you. And then you could just dump this into an image tag and it should work. Um, so I'm gonna just make this on the server side app.get slash images slash uh, key, res rec. And then I can get the key through the params. And then all I need to be able to do is grab that image, right? This is the key, this is the name. This is how it exists in S3. I just need to tell S3, hey, give me that specific image and I'm gonna send it straight back down to the client. So let's make that function now. So again, this is a really small function. Uh, we're passing in that file key. We're gonna hand that over to S3 with the bucket name and tell it that we want a read stream 
that it will then return to us and then we can return out of this function. And the great thing about using a read stream is that if I bring this function into here and I call this to create a read stream, then we can just pipe this read stream straight into the res object and that will just send the image data straight to the client. So this is a super handy thing about using Express. So I'm just gonna cheat here a little bit and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna grab this key right here. And if my server works, I should be able to go into any HTML client and create an image tag, image source. And as long as it starts with images, because that's the base of my URL that I've specified here, and then is followed by the key. So images slash the file key that exists in S3. This should make a request to the server, the server should make a request to S3 and then pipe the image stream straight back to the client. So this should show that image, that first image that I uploaded. So if I go back to the React app, nothing is showing up and my server is crashing, cannot read property key of undefined. So I did something wrong in the server. Um, rec.prams.key, was that the error message? Cannot read on server.js. Okay, is it not params? Uh, rec params is not the thing. Are you sure? So I made a dumb mistake. I put rec instead of res and yeah, that was dumb. JavaScript, everyone doesn't care which order you put function parameters in. Anyway, my fault, not JavaScripts. So refresh, there we go. Okay, it's getting it from the server. So uh, if we actually take a look, I'm gonna clear my network requests and go here. I can see the image is being downloaded from the server. That's localhost 3000, that's actually proxying to localhost 8080, slash images, slash the key of the image that goes to my express server, which then goes to the S3 bucket, grabs the image and then displays it here. So that's it. And if we take a look at the code, we can see we post an image, it comes to the server, it then gets sent to S3 through this method here. Then when we wanna get that image, we can just uh, create an endpoint like this, where we can grab the key, create a read stream and send it back down to the client. So this is fully functional. It's uploading the image to S3, getting it back from S3. There is still something that I would change here though, because the uploads directory is gonna keep storing all of these images in this folder. And this is unnecessary because once it's on the S3 bucket, we don't need it on the server anymore. So once this is successful right here on line 21, once we upload the file to S3, uh, it would be great to just delete the file from the uploads directory. So I'm going to just uh, include the FS library require and the utils because I wanna create an unlink file function that uses a promise instead of a callback function. Um, done this wrong. That needs to be util actually, I think it is. And then I go util dot promiseify fs dot unlink. Cool. Um, so this just makes it easy after we've uploaded to S3, I can say await uh, unlink file um, and it'll be the file path, I think, file.file, no, file.path. Um, let me just double check that. Um, Malta gives us path, yeah. So path uh, from Malta gives us exactly where it's located on the server. So we'll just use that path to delete the file once it's been uploaded to S3 uh, and that will clean it up. So I'm going to delete that uploads directory. And if this is successful, uh, it'll create the uploads directory. It'll put a file into it, upload to S3 and then actually delete the file from the server because it exists in S3. So I'll just test this out quickly. Let's upload a new file here. Submit that. So if that was successful, uh, it still exists 
in my uploads directory. Oh no, it doesn't. Okay, so yeah, that worked. Uh, it took a little while to get to S3 and then back, but it no longer exists, so that unlinks it there. And there is actually another library called uh, Malta S3, I think, that does this in one step. So instead of uploading the file to the server first and then uploading to S3, uh, it just takes the file as it's coming in through uh, an upload stream and pipes it straight into S3. So it never actually gets stored on the server itself. And this can be really handy if you just wanna send it straight to the S3 bucket. However, if you do it this way, this does allow you a little bit of time from the file getting to the server and you sending it to S3. So you could perform some actions like uh, maybe apply a filter, maybe resize the image, maybe resize it into a bunch of different sizes and store them all on S3 bucket if you wanted to. And then by having it come through the server on the way back down to the client, you can do some sort of authorization or any other things you want in your JavaScript code before the image gets from the bucket to the actual React client in this case. That's it for this video. Check the description for all the code examples and any other instructions that I'll put down there and check Stack Overflow when my code examples don't work for you. And why do I live with it? And why do I live with it? I like getting money, I got time to get it. Target on me, so my car's attending. Dancing with the devil, I don't buy.